Welcome. I'm Susan Sheridan Tucker, Executive Director of the League of Women Voters Minnesota. And today's program will be focusing on caucusing in Minnesota. Every two years, Minnesotans come together to cast their preference for candidates and offer up resolutions that can be carried to each party's convention for adoption to their official party platforms. This year, with an open presidential seat and more attention being drawn on caucuses and primaries, our goal today is to provide the information that you'll need to caucus in your, no your own neighborhood on March 1st, 7 p.m. But before we get too much into the details, I'd like to introduce our two guests, representatives from Minnesota's two major political parties, the DFL and the Republican Party, who will offer more details about how each of their parties approach caucusing. To my left is Vicki Wright, who has served on the DFL State Executive Committee and its Budget and Operations Subcommittee, in addition to five years as Constitution Commission Co-Chair. In her local suburban Senate district, she's been the party unit's communication director and treasurer, as well as recently completing three terms as chair. Outside the DFL, Vicki has made a career in marketing communications as a writer and creative director. Vicki was the DFL's part-time training director for three years before na being named its full-time director in 2015. Welcome, Vicki. Thank you. And to my right is Kathy Tinglestad, a Republican, is a former member of the Minnesota House of Representatives who served in District 49B, which primarily serves um, Andover and Coon Rapids. While serving as a state legislator, Tinglestad was the trainer of all of the newly elected legislators for 10 years. Kathy was first elected in 1996 and served until 2008. While in the House, she served as chair of the Governmental Operations and Veterans Affairs Committee and was a member of the Capital Investment, Environment and Natural Resources, Health and Human Services, Redistricting, and Rules and Legislative Administration Committees. Quite a few committees. <laughs> Uh, Kathy also served as a member of the board for the Anoka Hennepin School District, where she served from 2009 to 2012. She has a background in marketing communications and currently works as a business consultant. Um, Kathy is also a 25-year member of the League of Women Voters, and within her local Republican Party, she has held several leadership positions and currently trains all of the Republican precinct caucus conveners in her area. So welcome, Kathy. Great, thank you. So um, thank you both for joining us today. And Vicki, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, this year we've been hearing a lot about the Iowa caucuses. Briefly provide us an interview or, 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 or an overview of the, what the Minnesota caucuses are and, and why do we use the caucus system and not a primary system? Well, I think that as far as why we use it, it's, uh, uh, it's because there's a statute that tells us we have a, we have a caucus system instead of a primary system. But um, I think the reason we have it is because it's the best possible way to organize the grassroots. The thing about Minnesota, no matter what party you're uh, affiliated with, is, is we build our party from the bottom up. And that, I think, is helpful in really turning out the vote and keeping people engaged, making them understand that they can literally be part of the process just by raising their hand and getting involved. And I think caucuses demonstrate that. Um, the, uh, the vote that we take for the presidential preference uh, helps establish how many delegates will be going to the national convention, but it's not the primary reason we caucus. Great. Thank you. And Kathy, why don't you remind the audience when precinct caucuses will be held and what's the best way for them to figure out where they should show up? Sure. Well, basically it's Tuesday, March 1st, 2016 begins at 7 o'clock at night and we expect a large turnout so we're encouraging people to come you know 630 quarter to 7 but it officially begins at 7 o'clock and um, um, as far as where they can find out more about it it's um, on the Secretary of State's website mm -hmm. and I tell people it's usually not where you vote in a regular election mm -hmm. it could be but typically it's at a, a school or community center so it's different typically than um, the location where you vote each year so people really should uh, check twice before yes. going out okay thank exactly. you and um, we know that um, 
the parties handle caucuses uh, a little differently. So can you describe the re Republican process? Sure. Well, basically this year there's going to be a presidential straw poll, which will be binding at the national level. And this is the first time that that's happened in recent memory for the Republicans. So that will be a little bit different. But as far as the whole process, you know, it's um, election of officers, election of delegates and alternates to the next convention, and then uh, uh, resolutions looking at the state party platform. Okay, great. And how does it differ uh, at the Democratic Party? Well, it sounds very much the same, actually, okay. um, especially because they'll be doing the vote uh, to establish the delegations that will go to the national convention. Um, we uh, take votes on uh, our precinct caucus, uh, or precinct officers for the two-year cycle as well as uh, people who will be delegates to the next level at, at the organizing unit convention. Yes. And uh, will you do a straw vote as well? That will it's be called, binding? we call it the pre presidential preference ballot. Okay. And it is, it, when we say binding, it means that yes, there's a certain percentage then will, that will be established of all of our delegates uh, who, are, who will go, that will be assigned to each of the candidates who receive uh, at least 15% of the vote. Okay. And Kathy, tell us, who can participate in a caucus? Can anybody just show up? Sure. And uh, do you have to declare party affiliation? Right. Yeah. Well, we encourage everyone to show up. Um, if you're over 18, you can participate. Um, if you're under 18, as far as um, by the election date in November, then you could come as an observer. And actually, we need observers to help with running the caucus as far as some of the uh, um, things with being a teller and some of those aspects of the caucus. But we really encourage everyone to come and obviously that evening you need to decide which party you are. But um, we welcome everyone and you know um, as part of the Republican uh, part of the caucus there are certain things where we say you know you should generally agree with the party platform, you should generally vote for Republicans in the last election or intend to in the next election. So there's certain basic things as far as what's considered being a Republican for that night. Okay. And um, Vicki, what about non-citizens? Um, would you encourage non-citizens to come to caucus well, as an observer? I would say definitely as an observer or guest. I think it's a, it's a wonderful introduction to the democratic process. Um, we too also have a registration process whereby uh, when you sign in and provide your address you are affirming that uh, you are uh, we will be eligible to vote um, mm -hmm. in the November 8th election uh, and that you are a resident of that precinct mm -hmm. and that you are also, uh, you consider yourself a member of the DFL party and you're not a member, an active member of any other party because if someone were to switch over we would we would welcome that as well as long as they, they understand that that they are now saying, okay, I'm not an active member of any other party, that's fine with us. And then, uh, so, so as they sign in, um, we uh, affirm that, they are affirming that. Um, there's another process then for guests to sign in. All of our meetings in the DFL are open, okay. so um, people could come and observe, uh, and, and, I, and we would welcome them um, for that purpose but we, we would keep them separate from those who are voting in the caucus and so on. The other thing too that's slightly different from what Kathy described is that we allow 16 year olds to participate. Um, right. They are not allowed to do any voting, uh, but they can be involved in present, presenting resolutions. Okay. Uh, they can even run for a precinct office. Um, if they wanted to be chair or vice chair in the precinct, they could do that. Um, so all of those things are, are available to 16 year olds and we get quite a few people who are sent by their high school social studies <laughs> teachers or whatever to get a little extra credit, and that's really fun for yeah. us too. Yeah. Good to engage them early. It's really great. Engagement. It's great. Yes, yes. and great. I think this year there'll be a lot of interest in that too. Terrific. Yeah. So before we get too deep into the details of caucusing, to shed a little humor on this, um, we found a video produced by the um, the LA Times explaining how the Iowa caucus works through the perspective of the gummy bear. Um, so let's take a look at that.
So the video we just played focused on the Democratic Iowa caucus process. Is it the same? No. <laughs> well, actually, what's interesting about it is we do have a thing called walking sub-caucuses. Okay. And that can be used at various, uh, it might happen at, at your local caucus, depending on how many people want to run for delegate. Um, it's not how we choose our presidential preference, okay. which is dramatically different from Iowa. Like I say, we do that with an actual ballot that you, you once you register, you fill it out and you put it in the ballot box. So that part, part of it is entirely separate. And private. And private, exactly. The walking sub-caucus might occur if there were uh, many more people who wanted to run for delegate than there were delegate slots to be elected. Um, and they might then uh, use proportional voting, which is uh, the more formal term for mm -hmm. walking sub-caucus, where you divide up according to various issues as well as candidates um, to be selected to be a delegate to the next process. So. Um, I was in Iowa, in fact, and got to <laughs> got to witness it. It was it was very interesting, very and, very, and quite different from what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And do the Republicans do that at all? No, we traditionally have not done that. It's always been secret ballot, and you know this year it's uh, quite a bit different because the presidential poll is binding. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of ballot security issues that we want to make sure and follow this year. That's okay. for sure. And. How much time should people allot for attending caucus? Because you're not just coming in to vote, correct? Right. Well, you can, though, for in the, Demo in the Democratic side. Okay. Uh, you can come, uh, register, and, and you get your ballot upon registration. Okay. Uh, and then you can vote and you can leave if you need to or, or choose to. Of course, we want people to stay, and sure. we're hoping that, that they feel welcome to stay. Um, but depending, you know, with, with this year being uh, so intense and so many candidates and, and so much uh, um, enthusiasm going on, we expect large crowds. And so uh, it, it may be that a lot of people will just come and vote and leave. Um, but uh, they do have that option. And as far as how long it takes, if you do choose to be part of the, the caucus session, I would say on average about two hours. Okay. Uh, but if you're in a, in a place where there are 600 people at your caucus, it might take longer. Mm -hmm. um, if you are in a, in a rural area where uh, 20 people show up, it might be less time. But it, uh, the voting will continue until 8 p.m. So the, most caucuses will last beyond an hour. Okay. For sure. But the voting ends at 8? Uh, it ends at 8 unless there are people still in line ready to, to register. Just like when you go to the polls, if you are still in line when the polls are scheduled to close, you are still able to come in and vote. And it'll be the same thing for our preference ballot. Okay. And does the process at all get held up if the lines are very long, or is the caucus uh, well, the caucus on. will go on, okay. yes. So we would encourage people to come early, as Kathy said. Mm -hmm. uh, our registration is scheduled to open by 6.30. It must open at 6.30. We are encouraging people that are expecting a big turnout to open sooner okay. uh, so that they can start processing uh, registrations and, ba and balloting sooner. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is that a similar process in terms of the poll being open till 8 o'clock for the vote? Can you just cast a vote and, and leave, or are you expected to stay? Well, our um, presidential straw ballot this year is like the second item on the agenda after um, officially um, electing the officers for the precinct to run the caucus and for the next two years. And so uh, basically, you know, we're encouraging people to stay for that first hour for sure. And, you know, some of the larger caucuses might go till 8.30 or 9 o'clock. But um, basically it is different from a regular uh, voting at an election so you can't really come in vote and leave you know because it's um, not the first thing on the agenda and so um, this year what will happen as people register is that they will get a voting card showing that they've registered and they're qualified then to cast a vote um, you know later on in the meeting when it gets to that agenda item about the presidential poll They'll exchange that voting card and some precincts are going to do a voting sticker with their name tag But they need to have some kind of identification saying that they've signed in um, They're qualified in that precinct and then they get a voting card for the presidential poll which then they're able to ba uh, ballot you know, with a secret ballot and turn that in. Okay. And then if I could just add too, um, I know that the state Republican Party wants to um, get that data from each precinct, each area, um, by about 8.30 or so to process it statewide and definitely have that for the 10 o'clock news on um, Tuesday, March 1st. 
Are you using any special apps, computer apps, to get that information? Uh, well, somewhat. I know that there's a lot of spreadsheets yeah. in our area. We have 28 precincts, and so we have one person that's going to put that all on a sheet and email it into the state party, and I think that's fairly common around the state. Okay, great. And so um, both of you have mentioned, you know, the volunteers and uh, what it takes to facilitate a caucus. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how does that work? How does someone get selected um, to participate as a leader in the caucus and then eventually become a delegate? Um, can you, why don't sure. you start, Kathy? Yeah. With well, basically show up that night. <laughs> yeah, that helps. <laughs> Although you can be elected a delegate without being there that night. Sometimes uh -oh. people are out of town, so yeah. one of your neighbors could submit your name for a delegate. But to be an officer, um, actually a convener, you should have been up to the training in February. But we do make it accessible so that if somebody wants to run the caucus that night, we hand them the script, you know, as long as there are people in their precinct elect them to be the uh, caucus convener that night, they can actually do that. But to be a precinct officer is a two-year commitment, and okay. it's a great way to be involved in the party, um, get to know the local legislators and other people. So it's basically show up, have an interest. You know, I started when I was 18, and so, you know. It's so no special qualifications, <laughs> exactly. just, just a passion and an interest. Exactly, yeah, it's okay. a great way to be involved. Great. and. Similar? Very similar, yes, mm -hmm. um, and I think that Kathy's absolutely right. You're, the people who convene the caucuses have to have training, they have to know what the procedures are and so on, but uh, then the process is, is identical where the caucus will elect a chair who is the official um, uh, person running the caucus. Frequently that is the convener, but it isn't always so. Mm -hmm. And so typically then the convener then kind of acts as a coach as necessary. But as, as Kathy said, also in the DFL, we have a script that any, any caucus chair can follow and, and go through the, the process step by step. And they can just simply read what's on the sheet and, and they'll be okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then typically there's always somebody there who, who knows a little bit about what's going on as well. And I find that caucuses are a pretty friendly uh, kind of uh, experience as long as you're willing to ask questions and not and because uh, it can be confusing if you're new to it mm -hmm. but uh, people generally want to answer questions and are anxious to have new people arrive so um, I would encourage anyone who's a brand new um, attendee <clears throat> to really engage and get to know the people around them and and uh, stop the proceedings with a question if if they are confused mm -hmm. because it'll help everyone there's always a few people who want to ask questions and don't right. so if someone has, is, has the courage to ask it it's always a good thing well this year being a presidential um, election clearly we're focused very much on on those offices very much, yes but are there other offices represented at the state level and local level that um, appear in the caucus absolutely uh, especially because this year we'll be electing the entire legislature in Minnesota um, so all of the candidates who will be seeking House and Senate seats in at the local level um, certainly will be at their at, at caucuses in their district um, and so this is a wonderful opportunity, especially for, for new people, to meet the candidates. I think it's the best thing about Minnesota is how easy it is to meet candidates at, at every level. Uh, I came here from uh, Michigan, although I'm a Chicago uh, born and bred native, but uh, I was so surprised that I, I met my congressman the first time I went into an office to stuff envelopes. And I, I, I was bowled over. Mm. This doesn't happen in a lot of other places. Right, right. We take that for granted here. And so I think that uh, the idea that you can engage with the elected officials and those seeking election um, is one of the most attractive things about our process. So then we can expect to see candidates um, at the caucus, will they make a pitch, a personal pitch for their for themselves? Um, do they have representatives that, because they obviously can't be in every room, <laughs> So how, how does that work? Sure, yep. They try to get personally to every precinct, but obviously that's not possible. So they do have people who would perhaps read a letter from them okay. or have some um, literature about their um, results, what they've been doing in elected office or a campaign brochure. So especially at the congressional level, um, you know, those people can't get to every caucus. So maybe they have a video or something, um, you know, some type of handout where they want to basically introduce themselves to those potential voters and let them know that they are the Republican candidate. Okay, great. Now, um, uh, delegates are selected. Um, what happens then after you become a delegate that night? Or mm -hmm. um, 
what's, what's the time commitment um, going forward? Do you just show up at the state convention as a delegate? Uh, actually, you, it wouldn't be the state convention. Uh, I, it would be the organizing unit convention. So in, in the metropolitan area, typically we're organized by Senate district. So it would be your Senate district convention. So it would be all the precincts in that Senate district who would then uh, meet, come together to uh, endorse their House candidates as well as their Senate candidate. Um, and then elect their uh, Senate district officers, um, examine their constitution for their local unit, as well as then consider the resolutions, which we haven't had a chance right. to talk about yet. We'll get to that. But uh, that's all voted on at the convention. That's typically a full day on a Saturday, um, t usually a weekend, usually a Saturday. Um, so it would be within a month or so of, of the caucuses. Everybody, we have a window in which people uh, can, in the local units can schedule their their convention. So. Um, I have, I don't have it in my head exactly. I think it's about a four or five week window okay. that the local units have right now, um, in order to uh, to ha hold their conventions. Okay. And then the, and then they elect more delegates, who go to the state convention and also their congressional district convention. So the same people go to the next two conventions um, once they're elected. So there is a bit of a commitment. Um, On that, yes. When you're a local unit, uh, local party unit delegate, it's one day. It's one convention day. If you get elected to the next level, you'll go to a, two conventions, congressional okay. district and state convention. This year, our state convention is only going to be one day. So it's not a huge time commitment, okay. um, but um, it, it, it's really fun, really yeah. exciting. It's good to know, though, what, mm -hmm. you know what, what's expected. Yes. And what about on the Republican side, sure. similar? Very similar yeah. to what Vicki was saying. And um, a lot of times, like you said, uh, Senate district areas are the organizing unit. And uh, sometimes in rural areas, it's the whole county. Mm -hmm. But um, people go to that one-day convention. And then there is where they elect people to the congressional and state convention. And it's interesting, um, when I did a training for conveners last week, one of the guys had mentioned that somebody he sat next to at the precinct caucus level was a first-time person. And he, he nominated her to be a delegate. Well, she ended up going to the state convention and onto the national convention. That was her first time. Wow. She started at the precinct level actually went to the National Convention. So it can be done. Yeah, exciting. That, that's great. So uh, we've kind of talked a little bit, mentioned resolutions. So let's talk more fully about um, what the purpose of the re res resolution is and um, what's the process? Can uh, anyone bring uh, a resolution forward? Is there a specific format they need to follow? Is it something they do ahead of caucus or when they're a lot of those things they do a lot of those things <laughs> um, on the DFL side we we do have a form that, that is used for uh, all resolutions uh, you choose the category in which it falls uh, if it's environment or education or um, uh, national defense or wh whatever the category might be um, you, you select that you put your your name on it and, and your phone number in, in case we need to contact you mm -hmm. um, uh, about it for any reason um, and then it, uh, the resolution is written on there. It's presented to the caucus. Um, the caucus has, at, at that point, decided how much time they're going to discuss each re resolution. That's part of their rules um, vote that they do at the very beginning to determine, are we going to talk about this for a minute or two, or what are we going to do? Um, and then uh, the caucus votes on it. Uh, on that form, it, it is recorded whether it passed or failed. Okay. And all of those forms are then gathered and turned into the uh, uh, resolutions committee at the, uh, of the organizing unit. They then consider, uh, they pull it all together. Uh, sometimes they're the same resolutions because an organization um, might uh, want to present the same resolution at multiple precincts mm -hmm. and in multiple districts around the state as well. This happens very frequently and actually it increases the likelihood that that resolution will make it to the state convention for a final vote. Uh, what ends up happening is that once the resolutions are gathered at organizing unit level and voted on at that convention, um, a, a limited number can go forward to our platform committee. Our platform committee then assembles the resolution ballot that will then uh, be considered the state convention. So all the state delegates vote on what, uh, which, which 
uh, of these initiatives will be ultimately part of our platform. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the process. And, and uh, somebody just recently told me a really interesting story that the uh, Peace Corps started as a mm. resolution here in Minnesota at a caucus. Great. Really? Yes, back in back in the '60s, uh, it, someone. It, it, Put this idea forward, and it and it caught the attention of uh, the, the President Kennedy and his administration, and they decided they would take it uh, and make and actually make this happen. So uh, it's very exciting to Good. to see that 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 is the kind of thing that that is a real possibility, hmm. genuine grassroots influence. <laughs> right, right. And and what about in the Republican Party? Very similar. Um, ideally, they use a form, but. We've seen resolutions where people just bring in a piece of paper. They basically need their name on it and phone number if they need to be contacted at the next level. And then um, it needs to uh, reflect if it passed that precinct or not. So as Vicki was saying, that it would go on to the next level um, <clears throat> convention and eventually perhaps be in the state party platform. Okay, terrific. Well, just for full disclosure, the league does create its own uh, mm -hmm. caucus resolutions, which are posted on our website. So if anybody's interested, okay. they could go to our website and see the resolutions that many of our members will be bringing to caucus. Super. Um, so you both have been very involved in the political system and we know that Minnesotans are pretty good about turning out for voting, especially presidential voting, but not so great when it comes to caucuses. So what can we do to attract people to attend caucus? Any, any thoughts? Oh, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, lots of thoughts. And that is that uh, we, we, have, we look at all the media available to us. So we're using social media. We are also um, doing uh, telephone robocalls to uh, past caucus goers to remind them uh, of, of where, where their caucus is and how important it is. We're also sending out postcards from the state level to, uh, to a very large audience. Um, and then a, all the local units uh, do press releases to their local newspapers and so okay. on. Many of them run ads. And, uh, and quite a few are also doing their own postcard initiatives. And uh, so we expect that people will get a lot of information about where their caucus is and why it's important. Okay. We, we think this is a really, really vitally important process. And uh, we're, real, we're proud of it in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So we want to spread the word. What are the Republicans doing to encourage? Basically the same thing, a lot of email outreach. Okay. Um, we're talking to people through their uh, faith-based organizations okay. and a lot of networking and talking to your friends, but it is really important to go. I know it's difficult sometimes on a Tuesday night for people, but mm -hmm. it, you know, if you just look at it uh, one night a year to make that commitment, um, you know, it is really important. And any activity on the uh, campus campuses? Oh yes, yeah. yes, okay. extensive. Good. Uh, we extensive want activity. To yes, reach out mm -hmm. to the newest voters. That's right. Great. Well, um, so for those of you in the audience who've never been to a caucus, we would certainly recommend that you at try to attend. It probably is the most direct, uh, hands-on experience that a voter can have in deciding. Um, who's going to uh, run for office, and what issues get represented on a party's platform. So we really would encourage that. And I'd also like to just draw attention to, the, um, to a, um, a program that will be on February 25th from noon to 1.30 um, at uh, the Neighborhood House. Secretary of State Steve Simon will be presenting his 2016 State of the State of Elections address. And he'll be talking um, about how people can get more uh, civically engaged in the election process. Um, along with his um, uh, statement will be uh, two workshops, one on caucuses and the other on uh, attracting uh, new participants as election judges. So uh, if you have the uh, time and availability to go on the 25th, we would str strongly uh, recommend attending that. And you can get more information on the Secretary of State's website or the League's website. And so we invite you to uh, look further at those details. Um, and just in general, we would say that the Secretary of State's website is an excellent resource uh, for finding out everything related to the elections. Um, you can find your polling place, uh, you can register uh, to vote online, and uh, when the time comes, you can seek um, your absentee uh, ballot. 
Um, so this concludes our program for today. And really want to thank you both for uh, helping us uh, work, work through what a caucus is. And, um, and we hope that many of you will uh, play your part in strengthening our democracy and showing up at your precinct caucus. Thank you. Great.